Hello, everyone. Welcome to Advancing Adventism. Now, as you can see, we're going to be talking about what it means for Christ to dwell in our hearts. Now, the usual idea for this is that there is some part of Jesus himself that literally dwells within our bodies or within our souls. And um, by that, obviously, you know, people don't mean like part of Jesus' physical body. Um, no, the idea is that there's some spiritual aspect of Jesus, kind of like a spiritual essence, um, a, a part to his person that is non-physical. That's what is meant by spiritual in this context. It means a non-physical aspect of Jesus that comes and literally dwells in our bodies in some way, right? But as we'll see, Ellen White had a very different understanding of what it means for Christ to dwell in our hearts. And um, to get into this, we're going to be just starting with a very short statement of hers where she talks about someone dwelling in hearts. And in this statement, she's not talking about Jesus dwelling in hearts. She's talking about just a regular person dwelling in hearts. So let's let's take a look at that. Okay, now in, in this, this is from a letter that she wrote to someone. And she tells them, if you do this, you know, whatever this is, it doesn't matter for our purposes here. She says, if you do this, you will live in the hearts of the church and they will love to do for you and will have a care for you, which not one of your children now possess. Okay, now I'm sure that none of us would read this and think that Ellen White is meaning that some non-physical aspect of this person to whom she's writing the letter, that that if they do whatever it is she's telling them to do, that some non-physical aspect of the person will then go and live in the hearts of, of people in the church, right? We all know that she's using this as a figure of speech. And when we use things as a figure of speech, it's not intended to be taken literally, okay? So this exact same language about living in the hearts of the church is also used by her elsewhere. And this time it is used in regard to Jesus. She says, may the Lord pity them and may he live in the hearts of the church is my prayer. Now notice those two phrases in, in the yellow. They're identical from the part live, tell the word church, live in the hearts of the church. It's identical language. So we have in the letter from 1864, she tells this person that they will live in the hearts of the church. And we all know that she's not meaning that some non-physical part of this person is inhabiting the bodies of the other people. She means that the people in the church will love this person and care for this person and, you know, that sort of thing. So why would we think to interpret this other phrase so radically different? It's the exact same language. She's just in one instance talking about a person, a human being here on earth right now. And in the other one, she's talking about Jesus living in the hearts of the church. So just based on these two statements alone, when we compare them, we really don't have any reason to infer from those statements that she means something different in regard to the Lord living in the hearts of the church as compared to what she means by this other person living in the hearts of the church. But we don't even have to rely on just, you know, not making an unwarranted inference from her statement. We actually have a very plain, direct, positive statement from Ellen White regarding what it means for Christ to dwell in our hearts. And it's even very, very short. Here it is. She says, Christ dwelling in our hearts by faith means the contemplation of Christ, beholding Christ, ever cherishing the dear Savior as our very best and honored friend, so that we would not in any action grieve and offend him. He dwells in us by the word of truth. So notice here, it's such a very plain and simple statement. Christ dwelling in our hearts by faith means, and then she just goes right into it. 
And notice that it's not about some spiritual or non-physical part of Jesus coming to literally inhabit our bodies. Um, it's about our way of thinking. It's about um, us contemplating Christ, uh, dwelling on the word of truth, contemplating his character, manifesting his character. It's about us caring about Jesus so much that we come to the point where we just would not ever do anything that would grieve or offend him. In practical reality, in the living out of our life, that we would not do anything that would cause him grief or any kind of offense, right? That's what she's saying here. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the practical aspect of Christ dwelling in our hearts by faith, uh, we have other videos on this channel that go into that aspect. Here's where you can find those videos. They'll be in our playlist on justification by faith. And of course, you can just click the end screen or we'll have links in the description to that, as well as links to what we referenced and read from Ellen White in the video today. So thank you very much for joining us and I hope you're very blessed.